press these bad boys. Oh yeah. So today's going to be pretty educational for a lot of people that don't understand why the Ranger Raptor can do what it can do, why it can jump and stuff. This is a video I wanted to make with the last gen that I had, but didn't get an opportunity to. So I've got the second gen here. Thanks to Ford have lent me this vehicle. My dozer here. We've got a pile of dirt. We've got the Ranger Raptor. If you guys don't know my background, I build motocross tracks, supercross tracks. That's pretty much my day to day. I have my own motocross facility and I grew up my whole life racing and everything dirt bikes and earth moving and machinery is, is pretty much my whole life. So I've done so many events globally for, for massive companies like Red Bull, um, Monster Energy stuff. So there's been a, a wide range of events and things that we've done in the past. The, the most sort of truck thing that I've done as far as building a jump for a vehicle would probably be Bryce Menzies jump, world record jump that we did in San Diego. We did the test jumps there, then we went to New Mexico. So we built all that with scrapers and stuff, dozers, and, and got him to the, uh, the world record. The way you design a jump, I might say, is very similar to pretty much how you design it for a motocross bike as well. So it has to be a nice smooth takeoff. It can't be too steep. Like you can't have anything that's, that's too G'd out um, or you will cause damage. So it needs to be a nice level takeoff so you can get some good compression um, in the suspension, but you don't want to be bottoming out when you're hitting and, and impacting into a takeoff. You want a nice smooth transition, allowing that suspension to have a nice comp even compression all the way through and then a nice level takeoff to make that vehicle essentially fly as straight as possible. Uh, but if, you, if you've got a vertical takeoff like this, again, the vehicle is gonna compress way too hard, way too fast, and you could do uh, some serious damage to a production vehicle like this. So I'm gonna to explain to you today how I'm gonna build the jump, and then I'm gonna do a time lapse of me actually building the jump for the Ranger Raptor, because it'll take me, take me probably about an hour to, to build this jump. And essentially, the, the distance and, and how we should build it and then the speed to do it and then we're going to jump it and I'm going to explain what could potentially cause massive damage to your car. Um, but today we're going to explain why it can do what it can do and we're going to build a Pacific jump for the Ranger Raptor. So in the next gen Ranger Raptor we have a smart shock. So it's, uh, it's a Fox shock. It's live valve controlled, it's internal bypass as well. So if you Google the term internal bypass after the video, Google will explain to you, There's a, there'll be a bunch of websites that explain what an internal bypass shock does. And then you add the live valve technology to that as well, and it just gives you a, a massive increase of ability for that shock. And, and it is a smart shock, so it's not just like you run of the mill shock you put in your truck and, and then you throw it away later when it wears out. These shocks are rebuildable and the technology that's in them is absolutely awesome. So it, it gives the car the ability to sense where in the stroke position it is and then make adjustments accordingly. Whether you're at full droop and you've made a jump, it'll go like full stiff, ready for an impact. So the technology that's in the Ranger Raptor is very, very advanced. And of course that gives it the ability to jump jumps. So if you ever do plan on jumping your Ranger Raptor, this video will give you a bit of a guidance. And again, guys, I take no responsibility for what you do in your Ranger Raptor, but this will help you determine whether there's an obstacle or a little jump or whatever that you're looking to do on your property in your Ranger Raptor. This will help you give you a bit of a guidance on, no, I shouldn't do that. or yes it'll probably be okay but again guys it's totally your discretion on what you jump and i take no responsibility for what uh, you do in your ranger raptor
So I'll give you a quick look and explain what I'm doing. So this dirt isn't really fantastic. It's full of big gumbo clay and it's, I've got to break everything down with a dozer, but it's, uh, it's getting there. So this will be the takeoff on this side. Then we've got a flat and then we'll have the, uh, the down ramp. So it'll be a, a tabletop, like a motocross style tabletop. So just massaging all this dirt down at the moment. But it's a nice gradual takeoff. Gonna clean up all the sides. I'll start packing all the sides in and then we'll finish the uh, the run in just here. I'll taper that lander right out the back there. So we have plenty of uh, landing room for the Raptor. But yeah, not the best dirt to work with, but it's the most cost effective dirt I had to make this video for you guys. So, so I'm gonna massage all this stuff now and then I'll push some of this dry, looser dirt back in and start shaping the takeoff. Righto, so here we have our Raptor tabletop. As you can see, we've got a nice long tapered lander for the Raptor to go down. So ultimately what I'd normally do is come back with the skid steer and clean all this up, make it all smooth, pack it in and make it all pretty with a water cart and all the rest of it. But this uh, this jump here is on a budget. <laughs> so it's it's all shaped up with the, uh, the dozer. So this is our takeoff. So and we'll be jumping in, in that direction. So from the side profile position, you can see that it's a nice mellow takeoff down to our, our landing ramp over there. The suspension here will compress, we'll leave the takeoff, and then we will hit the lander just there perfectly. So my guess is we'll probably be hitting this around 70, 70 I reckon, 70 to 80 to, uh, to make this jump. Okay, so I'm just in the Raptor now. As you can see, the, the size of the jump to the Raptor. So I believe it's, it's pretty good. I was just gonna drive back and forth and actually pack the takeoff in a little bit. Again, I'd love to have a water cart and a skid steer and all the rest of it, but we're on a budget here, people, sorry. So I'm just gonna drive the Raptor forward and back and just, just pack in where I'm, gonna, where I'm gonna jump the Raptor actually off of. As you can see there, the, the way that the vehicle is going to take off, the transition through, it'll get a nice smooth compression. Just wheel packing this in right now. And then we'll just take it steady and we'll just do small increases of uh, distance and just see how the Raptor feels. So that was much, much better. That jump. Perfect. Oh, I'm very, very smooth. Very, very smooth indeed. Alright, so that was that was pretty fun, but uh, hopefully this is showing you how to jump your Raptor if you're going to jump your Raptor. Again, I take no responsibility for what you do in your Raptor. I'm just giving you some sort of guidance um, as to how not to write your Raptor off in the first week of owning it. So, but there's a nice smooth transition here, as you can see the angle that the Raptor is there on. It's a nice mellow transition. It's not some big G'd out jump like this. Um, or, or the face of a sand dune or something like that. It's a nice nice ski jump, if you want to call it that. So, very ski inspired. Uh, tabletop, motocross style tabletop with a big, long, tapered lander. So, this is what Raptor is designed to jump. It's not designed to jump really steep. Uh, it's not a trophy truck, and that's what people need to remember, that this is not a trophy truck. It has incredible suspension and is capable of jumping. But jumping the right jumps but they don't actually tell you real world data on how to jump it and that's things that i like to collect whenever i do event work with vehicles or supercross tracks motocross tracks things like that i like to collect the data from what we actually did working out the length the width um, how fast the bike's got to go or how fast the vehicle's got to go and then collecting that data and having that data 
The jump height is around one metre, so we're about one metre high in dirt. The run up to the jump is 50 metres long. The length of the takeoff of the jump is seven to eight metres long, thereabouts. So the jump length, so from where the Raptor's sitting now to the sweet spot of the knuckle where it starts to taper down is 10 metres long. So at by the time I was doing 60, then I increased my speed. When I got to the very bottom of the transition, I went to 70 kilometers an hour when I put my foot right into it as I was taken off. That got me up to 70 kilometers an hour by the time I hit the dirt on the other side, by the time I landed. So I was at 70 kilometers an hour when I landed at the sweet spot. And then the length of the lander itself, so the, the place where I have to land the vehicle, is 10 meters to 12 meters long. So the width of the tabletop, so from, from one side to the other, is about five to six meters wide. So that's showing you guys real world data on the Ranger Raptor and how I've built this jump to how I've driven the vehicle to jump the jump. So hopefully that's some good information that you guys are interested in knowing and what the data is to jump a Ranger Raptor. The Ranger Raptor just keeps impressing me every time I bloody drive the thing. It's just, the suspension is incredible. Uh, I can't get over what it's actually capable of, but this is really what I wanted to show you guys with the first gen, but I never got an opportunity to do it just with just the way things worked out. But now with the second gen, showing you guys what to jump and how to jump it, giving you some real world data on jumping a Ranger Raptor is what I wanted to do. The 10 meters of distance on the jump, I was doing it at about 70 to 75. I was cruising up to the jump at about 60. And then just at the last sort of probably 10 meters before, 10 to five meters before the bottom of the transition of the takeoff. I'm giving it full throttle at that point, And that's gonna give me a nice, even squatted compression through the suspension to then keep the nose up. So you're gonna go a warp and it's gonna squat the back end. It's gonna keep the nose up. So that way you're not coming in just under the same amount of throttle. If you come in the same amount of throttle, it's gonna wanna pop the rear end on you because you haven't given it that acceleration and given it that squat in the compression and the suspension to send it in a nice flat flight path. So if you've come in and you've just gone and kept the same speed, it'll still jump, but you'll notice that your nose, you'll be nose down and you won't have that smooth up to land a transition as you've seen here today when, we, when I jumped the Ranger Raptor. So I'm gonna pack up here now, I'm gonna take the Ranger Raptor up, give it a good bath, give it a clean out and get it back into the shed. There is a massive thunderstorm just over the back here that is about to hit me. So luckily got this video knocked out for you guys. And uh, yeah, I might leave this jump here for uh, future videos. I'll leave it down here at the back of the paddock on the farm. And yeah, depending if there's another manufacturer that builds something that can jump, I'll have a jump here ready to go for it. So anyway, guys, that's the Ford Ranger Raptor and my explanation on why it can jump and how to jump it and just giving you a bit of an insight on what i do day to day in my life building motocross tracks and things like that and i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll catch you in the next one see you later